Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 27th, 2021 edition of the Sand and Storm Turners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Well, if there's a theme to today's podcast, it's patches. And let's start with Cisco. Cisco again released a number of patches today and the critical one among these patches is a vulnerability in the Cisco application policy infrastructure controller and this vulnerability manifests itself in an arbitrary file read and write that does not require any authentication. Both the Cisco Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, or APIC, as well as the Cloud variant, the Cisco Cloud Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, or Cloud APIC, are affected by this vulnerability. As this is a vulnerability that was identified internally, so no public uh, exploit known yet, I wouldn't rush anything here, but probably sometimes next week you do want to apply Cisco's patch and yep, no workaround available for this vulnerability. In addition, there are some vulnerabilities that Cisco patched in its Cisco NX OS and Nexus 9000, but these are just denial of service and privilege escalation vulnerabilities, so they are rated as high. Cisco also updated its advisory regarding the BlackBerry QNX vulnerability. If you remember, this was one that was really sort of uh, tricky to pinpoint. It's a vulnerability in the operating system. Apparently Cisco uses it on some of its product, but whether or not it's actually exploitable uh, depends very much on what software you're running on these devices. Cisco concluded that none of its devices are exposing this vulnerability. If you're using Ethereum and you're running the uh, Geth Ethereum uh, client, it's time to update uh, version 1.10.8, also known as Hades uh, Gamma, does fix a denial of service vulnerability that uh, could essentially uh, block your Geth client from processing any updates. The vulnerability is in the virtual machine that is used to process the Ethereum uh, code and is an older vulnerability, uh, but has become apparent and exploitable after the uh, London Ethereum hard fork. Details about this vulnerability will be made available at a later time uh, to uh, give uh, Geth users time to update. And well, then I have to point at least once in this podcast to a supply chain vulnerability and I guess a vulnerability in Atlassian's Confluence software does count as one because this is software that's often used to manage development teams. Apparently, there is an OGNL injection vulnerability in this software that could be used to execute arbitrary code. Now the advisor is a little bit unclear here, but it says, and I quote here from the advisory that uh, this vulnerability can execute arbitrary code on the Confluence server and that it would allow an authenticated user and in some cases an unauthenticated user to do so. So I guess this is an unauthenticated user remote code execution vulnerability. Definitely something that you do want to patch if you are exposing your Confluence server. Amation also offers a temporary workaround in the form of a script that you will run on affected servers. Probably may as well just patch. And VMware patched several vulnerabilities in its uh, vRealize log inside as well as vRealize operation products. These vulnerabilities are rated moderate and important. For the most part, uh, information leakage, but does require authentication. In some cases, even authentication as an administrator. So no reason to rush this out on a Friday. Wait till next week. And Kaseya, the company we all know from the recent R Evil attack, did p- patch additional vulnerabilities in Kaseya Unitrends. Now, these vulnerabilities had already been leaked, just like the vulnerabilities exploited by R Evil. These were discovered by the Dutch Institute for Vulnerability Disclosure. 
disclosed uh, to Casea. Now, uh, the Dutch Institute of Vulnerability Disclosure also then shortly after started scanning the internet for exposed servers and notify owners of those servers. But apparently the vulnerability was leaked. What is sort of a little bit of stopgap here, why we probably don't see widespread exploitation of this is that this particular vulnerability does require authentication, unlike the prior vulnerabilities that did not require authentication. That's it for today. There's a slight chance that there won't be a podcast on Monday just because I'll be traveling over the weekend. So talk to you again, well, maybe Monday or Tuesday. Thanks for listening.